Hello everyone, welcome to iExambi, prepare 50% faster, embrace the iExambi learning experience, download our app for 50% faster job preparation and also you can check out online course available on www.iExambi.com. In case any query, you can email us on hello at the rate iExambi.com and can call us on 920-552-4028. We have started 100 most important IT questions for GICRE IT exam and today we are going to focus on data structure, operating system and networking questions. So let's begin. Which of the following operations is most efficient in a singly linked list compared to an array? A. Accessing the middle element. B. Deleting the first element. C. Accessing the last element. D. Inserting an element at a specific position. E. Searching for an element. And the correct answer is B. Deleting the first element. In a singly linked list, deleting the first element is very efficient and takes O one time. This is because the head pointer of the linked list can directly reference the next node, bypassing the first node. No traversal or shifting of element is required. Unlike an array, where deletion involves shifting all subsequent elements, making it ON. The pointer manipulation in a linked list ensures this operation is constant time, making it highly advantageous over arrays for scenarios involving frequent deletion of the first element. Question 2. In a binary tree, how is the height of the tree defined? A. The number of edges from root to the deepest leaf node. B. The number of nodes from the root to the deepest leaf node. C. The total number of nodes in the tree. D. The total number of edges in the tree. E. The number of internal nodes in the tree. And the correct answer is A. The number of edges from the root to the deepest leaf node. The height of a binary tree is defined as the number of edges on the longest path from the root to a leaf node. It is a measure of the tree's vertical size. For example, a single node tree has a height of zero as there are no edges. Height is critical for evaluating the tree's balance and efficiency as unbalanced trees can degrade performance in operations like insertion and Searching. 3. What is the primary advantage of using a stack in a recursive algorithm? Option A. Efficient shorting. B. Memory allocation for variables. C. Backtracking capability. D. Managing concurrent processes. E. Sorting data. And the correct answer is C. Backtracking capability. Stacks are crucial in recursive algorithms because they support backtracking by maintaining a history of function calls. Every recursive call is pushed onto the stack and when a base condition is met, the stack unwinds the calls in reverse order. This property is integral for problems like solving mages, pre-traversal or evaluating expressions. The last and first out nature of stacks and shows that the most recent state is resumed first, making them perfect for backtracking scenarios. Question number four, which tree traversal is most suitable for finding the shortest path in an unweighted graph represented as a tree? Option A, in-order traversal, B, pre-order traversal, C, post-order traversal, D. Breadth first search. E. Depth first search. And the correct answer is D. Breadth first search. Breadth first search is an algorithm used to explore graphs or trees. It systematically explores all nodes at the current depth level before moving to the next level. This feature is crucial in several scenarios, especially when dealing with unweighted graphs or trees where BFS ensures the shortest path from the root to any other node is found as soon as the node is reached. 
Question number 5. Which CPU scheduling algorithm is considered optimal for minimizing the average waiting time in cases where process execution times are known in advance? Option A. First come first served. B. Shortest of first. C. Round robin. D. Priority scheduling. E. Multi-level queue scheduling. And the correct answer is B. Shortest job first. Shortest job first is widely considered optimal for minimizing the average waiting time. In cases where the process execu execution times are known in advance. This scheduling algorithm selects the process with the smallest execution time for execution next, ensuring that shorter tasks do not have to wait behind longer ones. Question 6. What is the primary disadvantage of the FIFO page replacement algorithm? Option A. It leads to page fault even for frequently used pages. B. It requires complex hardware for implementation. C. It is unsuitable for systems with large memory sizes. D. It cannot be used for virtual memory. E. It uses excessive CPU cycles for page replacement. And the correct answer is A. It leads to page faults even for frequently used pages. The primary disadvantage of FIFO page replacement algorithm is that it can lead to B ladies anomaly where adding more pages to memory increases the number of page faults. This anomaly occurs because FIFO evicts the oldest page regardless of whether it is frequent used leading to inefficient memory utilization. Question number seven. Which I.O. scheduling algorithm prevents starvation of request? A. FCFS B. SSTF C. Scan D. Look E. C. Look And the correct answer is C. Scan The scan scheduling algorithm, also called the elevator algorithm, prevents starvation by servicing request in one direction until it reaches the end then reversing direction. This ensures that every request, regardless of its position, gets serviced within a predictable time frame. Question number eight, which of the following conditions is not required for a deadlock to occur? Option A, mutual exclusion. B, hold and wait. C, no preemption. D. Circular weight. E. Infinite loops in processes. And the correct answer is E. Infinite loops in processes. Deadlock occurs when four specific conditions are met simultaneously. Mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular weight. Infinite loops in processes are not a prerequisite for deadlock as deadlock refers to resource condition not process logic errors. Question number nine, which layer of the OSI model is responsible for ensuring error-free delivery of data between source and destination? Option A, application layer, B, network layer, C, transport layer, D, data link layer, E, physical layer, and the correct answer is C, transport layer. The transport layer in the OSI model ensures reliable data transfer between the source and destination. It provides services such as segmentation, flow control, error detection, and retransmission of lost packets. Protocols like TCP operates at this layer to guarantee that the data packets are delivered error-free in the correct sequence and without duplication. It breaks down large data into smaller segments, assigns sequence number, and ensures acknowledgement of received segments. If an error occurs, this layer is responsible for resending the affected packets, maintaining the integrity of the communication. Question 10. 
which network device operates at the data link layer of the OSI model and helps to filter and forward data between LAN segments? Option A, hub, B, router, C, bridge, D, switch, E, gateway, and the correct answer is C, bridge. A bridge operates at a data link layer of the OSI model and is used to divide a local area network into multiple segments. It helps reduce traffic by filtering data packets based on MAC addresses and forwarding them only to the intended segment. This improves the overall network performance and minimizes collisions. Unlike a hub which broadcasts data indiscriminately, a bridge ensures that packets are sent only to the relevant portion of the network. Question 11. Which of the following protocols is used for resolving IP addresses to MAC addresses in a network? Option A. DHCP B. ARP C. ICMP D. DNS E. FTP And the correct answer is B. ARP The address resolution protocol is used to map an IP address to a MAC address within a local area network. It operates at the network layer and communicate with the data link layer to retrieve the physical address of the destination device. When device want to send data to another device within the same network, it broadcasts an ARP request to resolve the MAC address corresponding to non-IP address. Question 12. Which firewall type inspect packets at all layers of the OSI model to ensure complete protection? Option A, packet filtering firewall, B, stateful firewall, C, proxy firewall, D, next generation firewall, and E, network address translation firewall. And the correct answer is D, next generation firewall. A next generation firewall inspects packets at all layers of the OSI model, from the physical layer to the application layer. Unlike traditional firewalls, NGFW integrate advanced features like deep packet inspection, intrusion prevention system, and application awareness. They can identify malicious payloads in applications, enforce advanced security policies, and protect against sophisticated cyber attacks, for example, zero-day attacks. Question number 13. Which of the following is not a property of database transactions according to the asset model? Option A. Atomicity B. Consistency C. Isolation D. Dependency E. Durability And the correct answer is D. Dependency the asset properties, atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability are fundamental principles that ensure reliable processing of database transactions. Dependency is not a recognized property in the asset framework. While dependencies between transactions may exist in some context, they do not form part of assets' foundational principles. Question 14. In a relational database, which key uniquely identifies as tuples within a table and can never contain null values? Option A, primary key. Option B, foreign key. Option C, candidate key. D, alternate key. E, composite key. And the correct answer is A, primary key. A primary key uniquely identifies each record in a table and cannot contain null values. It enforces entity integrity, ensuring that every row in a table has a unique identifier. For example, in a table of employees, an employee ID serves as a primary key, ensuring no duplicate or null entries exist. Question number 15. Which of the following correctly describes the second normal form in a database normalization? Option A. The table contains no duplicate rows. B. The table has no partial dependency. C. Every determinant is a candidate key. 
d the table is free from transitive dependency e all attributes depend on the primary key and the correct answer is b the table has no partial dependency a table is in second normal form if it is in a first normal form and non key attributes are fully functionally dependent on the entire primary key not just a part of it so this eliminates partial dependencies which occur when a non key attribute depends on only a part of a composite primary key so these were the questions for the gic assistant manager examination and stay tuned with us for such kind of videos and content in case of any doubt reach out to us download our app for 50% faster job preparation thank you so much everyone bye bye